Hello and welcome to another Beer Clipper video. This video was inspired by a guy called Sigurd, who is Welton Brower Club, I hope I've said that right, on Instagram. And if you don't yet follow and subscribe to his Instagram, go do it, he does some fantastic builds. And he does a thing on a monthly basis where he does a friendly challenge. It's not for any kind of win or loss, it's just let's inspire each other. And uh, I watched him do one during October and was enjoying it so much that when he said, does anyone want to do this? I jumped at the chance. We came up with the theme of doing a fortification because we both like blood and plunder and it made sense for us to do something that we both liked and now you're all going to see the process that I went through in building my entry. I'll pop a link below to Sigurd's Instagram so you can go and have a look at what he built. It's absolutely brilliant and if I can I'll grab some pictures and I will also share them at the end of the video so you can see what he did. So anyway I hope you enjoy this. I had a lot of fun. It was a different type of build for me and I look forward to making a lot more of these as I start to build up my terrain collection for Blood and Plunder so that I can get some games in. So anyway I'll stop rambling. Thanks for watching and enjoy. So I have another challenge, uh, which I'm really looking forward to actually, this one. One of the guys from the uh, Encounter Terrain 10x10 last month, a guy called Sigurd, who is on Instagram and is awesome, and I will try to remember to link to his Instagram or what have you in this video. He and has challenged me and I've accepted because, well, you know, or actually I think he called out for people to accept the challenge and I went, me, 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 because why wouldn't you? I'm not, it's not that I'm not busy. And we came up with the, uh, with the subject. We've got a month, so the month of November, and the subject is fortress, so make a fortress. And that's it, so it's on a 25 centimetre square base, that's the maximum dimensions that it can be, it cannot exceed and, and overlap over a 25 centimetre base. Uh, and it's playable, so it's, so it's not a diorama, it's a, it's a gaming piece. And so I've spent a little bit of time, it's now the 2nd of November I think it is, um, so I'm two days into the build and I've not built the thing, but that's fine. I've spent a couple of days thinking about and researching on the internet what I'd like to create. So what you can see in front of you here were my first kind of initial sketches. Over here I've got the idea of maybe building a tall cliff and then having a fortress on top. That was the first idea I came up with. With that thought, I then did some research into real life um, fortresses. Oh, let me actually put this into perspective. I'm building this for Blood and Plunder, so this is gonna be a gaming terrain piece that I'll be able to use probably in my first games of Blood and Plunder. So alongside this, I'm gonna be looking at painting up at least two of the um, packs of miniatures that I got so that me and Angela can play on this when this terrain piece is made. So having said that, I went and I had a look at some um, real life um, fortresses in the Caribbean. Um, and this is on St. Martin. Um, I, the name for it has, has gone from me. I'll try and remember to pop it on the screen. Um, but you can see here that one, two, three, four, five, six. I'd need six 25 centimeter by 25 centimeter squares to do that, so I threw that away. I decided I didn't want to do partial. I may very well make that one. It's an awesome looking terrain piece and it'll be a wonderful set piece. But yeah, I've got a lot of large terrain. I don't really need another large item of terrain. So what I've settled on, if I zoom in, try and get that in shot, is this side here. So this side here is a very simple idea, which is, good, which is cool, but also a really awesome idea, I think. So initially I thought about having a little bit of sea, a little bit of sand, having the tree line, and then a palisade fort on the tree line. I've developed it a little bit since this sketch. I'm not gonna do the sea. I'm just gonna do from the sand rising up to the tree line and then the palisade. And the idea for this will be, it will be able to sit on top of those tiles I made for the lakes in the Battle Games of Middle Earth video, which I will attempt to remember to link just now in this video. And um, it will be able to be really modular and be able to sit in place. Um, and I might even be able to do some more tiles along the same sort of thing. It'll be nice and flat this as well. It's not gonna take up a lot of space which will extend maybe it into an island or into a longer kind of like shoreline. But for now, this is what I'm gonna do. So we're gonna have a flat base rising up very steadily and not very much um, just to a tree line, which will have like brush, you'll have the uh, tide line on it as well. And then in the trees, which will be a little bit of a clearing here or maybe a track leading off, there'll be a couple of guns sitting on some firing platforms and a wooden palisade and maybe some scatter terrain I'll make as well, which will be tents which can sit in the area behind. 
So that's what I'm going to make. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get together my materials and I'm going to get started. So um, I hope that you enjoy this and uh, yeah, I hope that I get it done in time and I hope that it matches what's in my head. The material I'm going to use and build up from is going to be this uh, one centimeter thick blue foam, which I think is going to be work perfectly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out a 25 centimeter by 25 centimeter square and when I've got that, then I can cut down from that and I know that I'm not going to be outside of my, of my limits. So I've got my 90 degree angle here. There's 25 centimetres, so we can draw that there. And that's going to be one edge coming out there. And then what we can do is we can measure along the bottom 25 centimetres, which I will do on this one. Actually, I'll get a different ruler. Actually, no, I'll do it on this one. This will be just fine. Not perfect, but okay. So that comes along to there. There's the 25 centimeter mark there. So then we can come along and we can measure up with the 25 centimeters from here. And finally, this we should find is exactly 25 centimeters, and it is. However, I will use this ruler because that one is not flush with the surface, and so a parallax will screw me up. There we are. So we have a 25 centimeter square base. You can see it is not very big, which is why I decided to cut the C out. So my idea will be is that we will have one edge, we'll have a wavy edge, which will be where the C line will be, and it will rise up to about two thirds of the way. So about a third of it will be beach, maybe just under maybe a quarter to a third will be beach. And then we'll have some trees up here, and then the actual palisade, a small palisade here with a couple of guns. So it's going to be quite small, but it's going to look great. So I'm going to get my knife and cut that out now. So let me do that while you're watching as well. Why not? I've got my safety ruler. Always use your safety rulers. You can buy new rulers, but you can't really easily buy new fingers to so look after them. And as always, don't try and cut it all in one go. Just draw the blade through gently a couple of times and it will cut nice and cleanly. And that should just lift out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to sketch on roughly where I want to have my different elements and then I'll bring you back to show you what it looks like. I have drawn on this, not that you can see really well on the camera, but I have drawn on this and what I'm now going to do is start carving. So I'm going to uh, put some music on shortly, but I'll show you the first cut and the first few bits before I do that. So basically this is where I'm going to start coming in for the, the water. So let's just start carving that out. And then, like I said in the intro, I'm going to come to about a quarter of the way up. Now the edge of that is roughly to about here, that's where it starts. So what I'm going to do now, I'll put some music on because this will not sound very nice and also will take some time, is I'm now going to very carefully shave down all the way across and get the, um, get the sand bank done, so what will be the, uh, the sand area. So I'll get that done, I'll put some music on and um, you can watch along. Well, there you are, that didn't take as long as I expected it to. <laughs> so what we're gonna do now is uh, gonna roughly plot out where everything else is gonna go. So I am gonna have the palisade coming around here. This is gonna be where the palisade is gonna be. And it's only gonna be like a, a shooting platform type thing, which is gonna be able to have a couple of guns pointing out to sea. Um, we will have uh, some trees in this area here. Um, maybe a tree here as well, just kind of like blocking some of the line of sight. And then this is going to be where the path is going to be. So it's quite a basic design. I do have some other blue foam here as well, should I decide that I want to raise the level a little bit more. But right now I'm not going to decide to do that. I'll probably make do with, um, with this. So the first stage that I've got to do now is I'm going to paint this with my terrain paint. Now, the reason for that is just to basically finish it off, if not to finish it off, to make it um, a bit stronger than it is now. Um, 
I think that I'm going to use a slightly different type of terrain paint to what I normally do. I'm going to be using some grout and some PVA, uh, mix that up, and I'm going to make it a sand colour and I'm going to cover the whole of this with the sand. So then I'll be able to put dry brushes of brown on and maybe some uh, the trees, uh, the deadfall from the trees, but it's going to be a very, very sandy looking, uh, looking base. So I'm going to get that mixed up. Um, I'm going to consider whether I'm going to build up any more um, 3D as well. And I'll bring you back and that's where I want to get to this evening. I want to have the sand on, so I'm going to think about the next layers as well. Uh, I'll bring you back very shortly. So decision made, I'm not going to build up any more terrain yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this with my sand um, to make it all solid and make it much less likely to break. And then if I do decide I want to build more terrain up, I can always do that and then cover with more sand later on if I wish. So I'm just going to do an initial state. So what I've got here is some grout, which I have pre-sifted. Uh, top tip, if you're using grout, shove it through a very, very fine sieve. Otherwise, you really will struggle with lumps. I have my sifted back sand for my back bank, which is also what I use in this mix to make a really nice sand colour. I've got some PVA glue and I've got some water. So I won't do all of this on camera uh, because it takes some time, but what I've found is that um, it's quite, uh, um, it doesn't like water very much, uh, the uh, uh, grout. And so it takes some mixing to get it into a good state. So you can see I've put a little bit of the grout and a little bit of the sand in, of the um, dirt. I put quite a lot of PVA in, it gives it a little bit more flexibility than it would have normally with just water. Um, and then just a very, very small amount of water. You need much less water than you think. So just a drip of water like that. And then what we do is we start mixing. And it takes a little bit of time before it starts to get together. Um, you can see that actually the grout settles on top of the water and it doesn't really want to go in. But with the sand and with the PVA, it mixes easier than it does without those two elements. So I'll get that done. There we are. So I'll leave that to dry now and then I might do another coating. So mix another batch up and put a second coat on or I might not. I'll see what it looks like when it's dried. But that's as simple as that and that is a really nice sand colour uh, which will look really good especially when it's got a little bit of green for contrast. Um, I was considering putting down a, a coating underneath of black maybe just to give it some depth but I think that two coats of this will, will more than cover the blue and it'll be really really strong and it'll be um, it will look much better, much better than maybe with the black. It might be a bit too dark. So I'm going to let that go off overnight and maybe do another coat in the morning and I'll bring you back for the next step once I've done that. That's dried overnight and uh, is looking really good. However, I've had some thoughts that I do want to put a little bit more um, terrain and rise. Not very much, just a bit of variation. So what I've got is I've just got some of this very thin 3mm XPS. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to build up the rough areas where I said there's going to be a track coming here and then this is where the actual um, this is where the actual uh, palisade is going to be so I'm going to build up with that just very very basically um, a little rise just a couple of millimeters just to make it a little bit more interesting and have the track in a little bit of a sunken area between so I'll get that done I'm just going to glue it down using PVA or gator glue or something like that probably gator glue to be quicker and then what I'll do is I will apply a few more coats of this grout and sand mix just until it's covered. Now you can see obviously it's uh, going to be a, a different colour. Uh, I am even thinking that I might just go over the whole lot with my terrain brown paint um, to cover up all the blue, make sure it's not there at all, or maybe even my black and then come in and start to apply the sand again. So um, a little bit of a rejig, but I think it's going to end up being better. So I'll get that cut and glued and um, I'll bring you back, bring you along for uh, each of the stages when I get to them. I have glued those black bits in place and I've hacked away at them a little bit to make them a little bit more interesting and not just flat. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to apply a couple of coats of the sand. I'm not going to paint it um, and I'll bring you back when that's all done and I'm ready for the next step. It's time to start work now. I'm on making the actual palisade. And uh, 
uh, there will be more coats of the sand mixture to go on and I'll be sorting out this little um, sharp edge here that I didn't, make, didn't spot uh, when I do the palisade because I am going to need to build up uh, more terrain on, uh, around the base of the uh, wood when I've done it. So I'll probably do that with some very small amount of air drying clay. But anyway, that's looking okay. It's a little bit warped. I'm going to fix that probably by applying the um, sand to the bottom to um, pull it the other way. So I might do that while I'm making the actual palisade. So that might get done as well next. So I'm going to use uh, balsa wood initially uh, for the uprights, I think. Um, I might change my mind, but the um, this bit won't matter what material I'm making because uh, I'm just going to talk a little bit about dimensions and also about where I'm going to locate the palisade. So first of all, dimensions. There's going to be a little bit of a shooting platform. So when a model is below, is not on the platform, the height of the wall needs to be higher than them, so they're fully hidden. But when they are on the platform, which is going to be about one and a half centimetres, about 15 mil. So if I line that up, you'll see there then about their shoulders need to be poking over or just below their shoulders. So that gives me an idea of roughly how high I want that uh, wall to be. If we go like that, what you can see is it's going to be one, two, three, four and a half centimetres roughly from where it's on the floor to the top of the spike. So that's roughly the dimensions. Where I'm going to locate the palisade, I'm going to have it coming in roughly along here. It's going to go here, it's going to have an angle, and it's going to go back. And I've decided it is going to be opened on each side in the, because I might extend this. Um, and also just because I think it's going to look a little bit more interesting than if I try to bring it back and then I have all the platforms and everything. So it's going to come on here have an angle and go back down there. And then I'll have some trees here and I'll have, like I say, a tent or two in here. And that's gonna be the extent of it. So two things to do. One is to sort out the warp. So I'm gonna try to do that, as I say, by putting some of the mix on the back and hoping that it drags it out. Um, and the second thing to do is cut um, a load of the materials. And I'll let you know what I'm using, uh, obviously. Um, I have some balsa but I don't actually have all that much. It's not that easy to get over here in Bulgaria. So it's quite an expensive material for me to use. And um, I like to not use it when I can use things I can find easily. So if I can find stuff uh, more easily, then I will use that and I'll have a look through my stash. Um, but that's rough. That's the next steps. Uh, I'll bring you along for the making step when I've got my materials together. And uh, yeah, um, let's, let's crack on. As you can see, I've been doing some thinking and some playing and I got out one of the cannons from the frigate for blood and plunder just so i can have a work around and look at some scale things and i think i'm pretty happy with the shape i've got there just sketched on in pencil so what i'm going to be doing is looking at the uh, at a template for this uh, you can see in the background that there is oh actually you can't but i pushed it out of the way but i had a lo got a load of my balsa wood here um, balsa wood platforms but i think I'm kind of having an eye about using it. I might do, I might not. Uh, but what I'm going to be doing now is making a paper template, which means I can either assemble the balsa wood or maybe use coffee stirrers and build it like that, which I've got far better supply of um, and save money because balsa is not cheap, as I've said. It's hard for me to get. So what I've got is a sheet of A4 paper. Let's just move the little cannon out the way. Sheet of A4 paper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it, basically. That's my plan. I don't know if it's going to work. I haven't done this sort of thing before. So I'm going to fold it so that, that you've got... So I've got the rough shape I, that I'm looking at making. It doesn't really matter to be absolutely accurate, but I do quite like the shape I've got. So let's, um, let's see whether I can do this. I will stop nattering, put some music on, and you can watch me struggle. There we are, so that's close enough. I decided against folding because it just wasn't gonna work. Uh, I was gonna to start to get annoyed. Um, and that's definitely close enough. It's uh, gonna be able to uh, allow me to mock up and offer up the uh, wood as I do it, and I don't have to risk damaging my base. So what I'm now gonna do is draw on this the actual extent of where I want the firing platform to be, bearing in mind that the palisade is gonna be in front of this shape. That's what I've designed designed it to be like. So this is actually the edge of where the boards are gonna be. Um, and uh, so we'll be about four and a half centimeters-ish. If we have a look at this miniature here, it's 28 millimeter miniature. 
it wants to be about four and a half centimeters, about that big at least where only the humans are gonna be, but then where the firing platform is gonna be, it needs to be a bit bigger because you need to be able to get around behind and there needs to be space for a recoil and all those things. So I'm currently thinking of it being something like this. So uh, a parallel line there, and then a deep corner and a power line there. However, I'm also thinking that there might be one of the cannon here, which means that it might actually end up being a kind of like this, so a square out. So we've got a cannon here and a cannon here. So we'll see. You know, I'll get some sketching done and I'll bring you along for that, and uh, then we'll start to assemble this using whatever materials I decide. I've just sat down and sketched a couple of options out on this template, and I'm happy with what I've got now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have it coming in with the platform here, then wide at the key, and then the platform coming off towards the back as well. So this is a walkway and this is the, the gun platform. Now if I just grab the little toy, the little scale cannon, you can see that we've definitely got plenty of space there for the cannon to go up right up to the edge. Remember this is where the palisade is gonna be. So it will be poking out through a hole and and potentially be re recoiling that far, maybe a little further, you can still get people past. I can fit my two cannon on, which is what I'm aiming for for this. It's going to look nice. So what I'm going to do now, and I mean now, actually now, uh, but probably not very much of this on camera because I want to uh, chill out. I'm tired from the week, but I am going to get this done. I'm going to make the platforms. Now, the idea for the platforms is, is that this will be uh, in, that, in that direction and this bit will be in this direction and then this bit will be at, a, at an angle. So I'll probably continue one up to the end or something. I might uh, continue this one and have this at an angle and this one being cut off very slightly weirdly there. It's a bit of an odd shape, but they've thrown this together to fit into the geography. The only other thing to say that I'm considering, I'm not sure whether I'll do it now or not, but I might do, is that I might have a little stream coming down here and washing down into the river and the stream will potentially go underneath so that I have a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a, um, of a culvert here for, for the stream. I'm not sure, it might not make any sense. So I'm gonna get stuck in with that. I'm gonna use, uh, so the, the idea is, is I'm going to use coffee stirrers and matchsticks, that's my plan. So I'll bring you along for the first little bit while I, when I start, and then probably sit down and put a YouTube video on, <laughs> ironically, and uh, get it done, but without the camera running, and I'll bring you back for the next step. But let me just get myself ready and start it off for you, so I'll see you in a second. All right, so I'm gonna try and do a little bit of this on camera, as I say, so I'll show you what I've done. So first of all, I have separated out the three areas that I'm gonna assemble separately. <laughs> and um, I've also got out the matchsticks that I have that don't have any sulfur on, because they're a little bit easier to use. And this will demonstrate what my plan is. So my plan is to have the matchsticks going across and then the wooden uh, planks going over the top. I'm going to do it properly, which I often forget to do. I'm actually going to do it properly, so I'm going to do it with offsets like this. Um, so it's going to need me to cut quite a lot of individual shapes. Certainly, if you can see here, that this is 90 degrees away from the front, but this angle isn't quite 90 degrees. I've made it a bit difficult for myself, which is not an unusual thing to happen. Uh, so um, what I'm going to do f is first of all cut a few sections uh, which are going to be used to start off and just use super glue to glue those in place. So this one is going to go here and is going to be glued across these two um, and then I'll get another one which will um, go here and another one which will go here and then the four sections will all be glued together. Um, one thing I could do, and I might actually end up doing, is not trying to cut things too neatly and tidily at this stage, because, well, if I get it wrong, then I'm really annoyed and it's just going to be fiddly. But what I have is my Dremel, or I've got another lower powered, a new lower powered um, little hand tool. And so once this is all glued together, I could maybe take this, trace the shape on it, and cut it out, and that might be a better way to do it. So thinking about it, I think I might do that. So I'll just stick a load of mat of these in place in the way that I want them to be. So with, with it oh, with the ends overlapping, as you can see, so one like that, one like that, and then one here, 
cutting the ends off obviously so they're not rounded so something like that and then when it's all dry and done I can come along with the cutter and carefully trim off the ends and that might be the neater way of doing it so yeah so let's get that done I'll um I'll run the camera for a bit and then uh, stop when I when I want to stop and go and do something else while I'm working on this um, I have shown you how I go about trimming these I do have a chop it I find it a little bit overkill now it's a little easy for me to uh, to work with like this. Oh, there was one other thing I wanted to add. I am going to leave these two long so they will underlap uh, the key and give it a little bit of support. But these two I'm going to need to measure and cut down as well. So I may as well do that now as well. So we will just do that visually. Cut there. Cut there. And again, no need for the chop it when you've got a sharp knife with a good blade. You could just do it like that, much, much quicker and easier and also less noisy. There we are, done. Splinters a bit, but it doesn't matter because we're, we're doing a quick thrown together palisade. So I'll pop some music on and you can watch a little bit of me trying to do this. I try and be in the operative word. made a bit of progress today on this so um, I thought I'd bring you along um, I'm ahead of this stage on one of them and I just thought I'd show you how I'm going about doing this so first of all what I've done is I've used super glue um, and big heavy weights to glue the strips in place and you can see that I've done it deliberately a little bit kind of haphazard and using some maybe some slightly damaged bits of the uh, coffee stirrer so the next thing I'm going to do is turn it over like this and paint a film of PVA all the way over the bottom. And what this will do is it will mean that the whole thing becomes one solid lump underneath and it will be much more hard wearing, particularly when I come to the next step after this one, which is going to be cutting the shapes, which I'm a little nervous of. Once I've cut the shapes for the first two, this here is the side platform, the one that's already past this stage and dried is the front platform, as I'm calling them. Then once I've got these two cut and secured together, then I will work out and join and do the triangle. I think I'm gonna do it that way. That's my idea at the moment anyway. So yeah, so we're just gonna paint PVA all over the back just to add as an additional binder, um, and I'll let that two go off. The other one is not quite even yet gone off because it does take a long time when you paint PVA on relatively thickly it takes a little bit of time for it to completely dry but it will be a really good seal particularly around the edges of the matchsticks and it will mean that it's far less likely to get broken when I bring my Dremel near it which is yeah the next step so there we are that's what I'm doing so thought I'd show you um, I'll get this all painted on and I'll show you how I'm going to make sure it doesn't warp okay so that's now covered entirely in PVA and as simple as it is what I'm going to do is put a weight on top and then put even more weight on top because the idea is is this is going to stop it from from warping so I will leave that overnight and I will bring you back tomorrow when I take it apart because I'll almost certainly have to make use of my knife just to kind of separate it because the PVA will probably have adhered slightly to the metal but it's easy to remove so yeah, just thought I'd show you that. Um, I will let that go off. We're getting, we're moving along rapidly now. I know there doesn't seem like much progress, but uh, yeah, I'm really pleased so far. I admit that I've just practiced this on the other platform. So uh, yeah, I did actually give this technique a go uh, and it worked just like I thought it would with no problems, which is really, really heartening. So let me show you what I'm doing. This is going to be trimming down these platforms so that they're the right shape because I clearly, obviously I made them oversized deliberately. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I've got a couple of clamps um, and I'm gonna clamp them in place so that I have wood under the edge and ed underneath everything. That was easy for me to say. Okay, so with that clamped, what we do is we get some masking tape and we're gonna mask around underneath where the cuts are gonna go. The purpose of this is to hold the woods together, hold the coffee stirrers together, so when I'm cutting them, they don't all kind of go off in different directions and vibrate themselves into pieces. 
Um, it's actually going to be easier on this one to do it from the bottom, butting it up against the um, matchstick, and then we can definitely get it straight. So we're going to put some masking tape around each end. So I'll get that done. With that masked up, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to draw against my template where I want the cut to go. Which is another benefit of the masking tape because it will enable me and help me to draw this line on a little bit more accurately. So we just draw that line across there. There we are. So that's where we're going to cut. With that done, we can get rid of our template and now we can see where we're going to cut. So. I will do this and I will mute the microphone because it's going to be loud, but I have a Dremel. I don't have a wood cutting implement, so this is actually a metal cutting implement, but it does it okay. So I'll now put some music on um, just because this is not a very nice sound, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be cutting along these lines so that they're going to be in the right place. So let me get that done. There we are. You can see the benefit of having the uh, masking tape from when it Got away from me a little bit because it's not the right cutting tool, you need to be really careful. Uh, but also, it, um, it basically meant that the whole thing stayed together. So now we peel that off, you can see that we now have a really nice cut, which is the right size and right exactly where I want it to be, um, and uh, will uh, go against the edge of the board. Like so, which is out of shot, shot that you can't see, but it certainly does. So what I'm now going to do is do the other cut, and um, then I will also put some music, uh, the music on so that this isn't too um, horrendously noisy. So let me just uh, get that cut done, and then I'll show you the next step. There we are. So you can see that you can cut really carefully with the Dremel, so long as you are careful, and it will cut, and it will leave the masking tape at the back still attached, which is very useful and it proves that as well you're not causing and going to be causing any damage to the bit of the platform that you want to save. So we'll peel all that masking tape off and there we are. We have our platform. Now that one is so let me just get myself together, bring the other board over and I'll show you what the next steps are. There we are. So this is how it's going to work and you can see that that is absolutely spot on. So they join like this. So that one comes in down here, this one comes like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get some uh, matchsticks and I'm going to run a matchstick along this end and, and, and glue it uh, to um, so all the way along the front and glue it there. And I'm going to put another one across here at this angle there. So I'll get that done. Um, and um, I will do that when I've got my, uh, I've not got my matchsticks to hand. So I'll just gather my matchsticks, get everything together, and I'll show you how I'm going to glue that. There we are. So we have these two arranged now in the correct place. And I've put it on top of a pl plate so that um, it's a little more stable and I can weight it down. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put a matchstick there. And I might actually even get one of my long matchsticks. Um, and we're going to put another matchstick coming across here. So um, that's going to then mean that these two are going to be joined together nice and securely. Um, and then I can offer them, um, I can then basically sit them on top of a platform that I will build behind the palisade. So that's how that's going to work. And I'll be able to trim some of these off once I've built the um, stri the cross piece. So this key, which is fits in there will be created once this is secure. So that'll be the next task after this. So I'm going to grab myself a long matchstick and trim it down and then I will glue those in place. I'm just going to use super glue. There's no point in uh, using anything else. Um, so, and then I'll probably cover it with PVA as I did for the other ones, just to add the extra, extra security. So we will mark how long we want this to be. And then trim that down, just using my sharp Stanley knife. It's really going to split the wood, but it still will give me the strength I need. So I'll get rid of that. So let's get some, PV, some PVA, some super glue on this, and uh, then we'll leave it to go off. So we want a bead of PVA, PVA. I keep saying PVA. Bead, bead of super glue along here, like so. 
and then carefully drop the matchstick in place like that. There we are. And then, should have had that out of the way before I did that. There we are. And then we'll run a little bit of super glue along the matchstick, make it a bit easier for me to put in. And then drop that in place as well. And then we'll weight it down, and then we'll leave it for an amount of time. There we are. Good. So now I'm going to weight that. Actually, I'm just going to hold it because I'm going to be able to be more accurate holding it than I would with weight. And super glue does go off quite quickly. So I will stop the camera now and, um, uh, and I will bring you back when I do the next step. So unfortunately I made a bit of a mistake with filming and the camera wasn't running when I was working on this, which is a bit of a shame because it was quite a, uh, quite a, quite a thing. What I've done here is I've got two long matchsticks and another one. Um, and I actually made use of the template to glue this. So I laid the template down and I very, very, very carefully glued it all together using a mix of super glue and some PVA. It's now a lot later in the day and I'm coming to actually do the planking over the top of it. And I'm really annoyed that at the end of when I'd made it, I found I hadn't recorded it. So this is going to be sitting in here. So in that gap in between. And the planks are gonna go crossways like that so um, it's going to be I mean I, I can make it as as deep as I wish in one sense but it's going to go roughly to around here and um, roughly to actually where the other end of the uh, this middle matchstick is I wanted that matchstick to be a little bit more round but how I'd trimmed down the edges and the angles that's just how it sat and it's fine so I'm going to now sit and I'm probably not going to run the camera because it's going to be um, a bit a bit fiddly but I might do for a bit and I'm going to glue um, coffee stirvers across and let me just grab them okay I'm back so I will literally be trimming I'll probably be trimming them down as I go but I literally again won't really be caring about trying to make them too accurate because I'll come along with the Dremel again and trim the edges off and make it nice and neat so that's the plan so I'm just going to come along like this and if I can open my knife, which doesn't seem to want to open, just one second. Don't know what happened then, didn't want to open, but I've managed to get it open now. <laughs> so what I'll be doing is I'll be coming along, trimming down some of the um, of the coffee stirrer, put a blob of super glue on in there, and then set it on top. Like that. And then we'll do the same again. Measure it roughly, trim it. Bit of super glue, like so, and then drop it in place. So I will get that done, and I'll bring you back when I'm done and when we're ready to glue them together, but we're making really good progress here now. With this build now at this stage, it's gonna split into a couple of different videos. I'm gonna continue with the terrain, and uh, these um, will uh, build up, and then suddenly in the video for the terrain, you'll have some painted miniatures and a couple of painted cannons, because uh, I'm gonna do those in separate videos, maybe one, maybe two uh, videos. I will show you what I'm gonna do. I'm planning on painting the pirates and the privateers, and they will get a boat. And I'm planning on the defenders being unaligned, so they will be the ones defending the land. And this will eventually be a quite a nice little uh, display board with a boat here and the, some of the miniatures charging and some of the miniatures defending and what have you, so it'll be a nice little display board. What I have for my cannon, I, um, I have two options. I bought this for the lake build, potentially to drop into the water. But when I put it next to my other uh, cannon, it's massively out of scale. So I'm not gonna use that one. That can go back into its box. And what I'll be doing is I'll pull two cannons out of the um, out of the Blood and Plunder 
boat and uh, make use of those and then they can be uh, either here or on the boat. Um, I think I may have another couple of spares coming as well, but I can always order some more if I need to. Um, so yeah, so I'll, I'll continue focusing on the, on the terrain build, but at the same time I'm going to be working on painting up some miniatures to dress this board with. So I just thought I'd show that, so, um, so that um, when they do appear you understand when I started um, and also understand where they came from. As part of this fortification build, I'm going to be making some, uh, painting up some troops and doing a little, some bits and pieces on the side. Now, this video is going to um, be a, a different one to the actual main build because it'll be painting miniatures. I don't want to clutter that one up, but I just wanted to show what I'm going to be doing. I've just had a quick look through. I've decided I'm going to go for some from the privateers. Um, and some from the unlined box set. Now I'm picking the privateers because that one comes with the cannon crew. So the privateers and the European sailor musketeers will be inside the camp. Um, and then on a one boat, which is all I've got at the moment, we will have freebooters and flibustier, which will be coming in to try to attack the camp. So I'm gonna go now and just prepare these. I'm gonna get them primed up and that. I'm not gonna film that, just be using the normal standard gray. Vallejo primer, get these cleaned up and primed. Um, I've also got a couple of cannon here which I've taken out of a set, uh, the set that comes with a, um, with the, uh, what's the name of it? Frigate, that's it, the frigate, sorry, I'm quite tired, as you can probably tell, it comes with a frigate kit. So I'll be painting these two up, both these blisters, both these blisters, and also the longboat. So I'll get them prepared tonight, um, and then I'll bring you back when I come to actually put some color on them. If you remember, we worked out that the height of the palisade needed to be about four and a half centimeters. So we wanted it so that it would be, he would be able to look over it when he stood on it um, to shoot a gun, but be below it when he stood behind it. So about four and a half centimeters, I think is going to be right. So what I have here is I am going for the balsa wood. I bought it, I need to use it. And I'm going to sit down, I'm going to put some music on in a bit, or put a film on or, tea, or some YouTube, and I'm just going to come along with a sharp blade like this. And it doesn't have to be too neat because, again, this doesn't want to be too much of a tidy build. So let me just do this. And I'm going to cut lots and lots of four and a half centimeter lengths. And if some of them are a little bit longer, I'll leave them. And I'm going to do that and then I'm going to work out how many I need because I don't know quite exactly what the length is I need. Uh, maybe I should work that out soon. Um, there will need to be some drop down bits where the guns are going to go. Um, I am going to stick just with the cannon. I, will, I have taken delivery of some field artillery, but I don't want the field artillery on this. So it's just going to be the two cannon. So I'll work out where those are going to be and cut a couple of shorter ones for that. But yeah, I'm just going to get stuck in. So I'll bring you along when it's done and when I'm about to glue them in. There's no point in you sitting watching me do that for the next probably 30 minutes or so at least. So yes, I'll bring you in at the end and when we're about to glue it. Well, that was a fun 25 minutes or so. I don't know if I've cut enough, but I'm going to stop for, for the time being because I don't want to waste my, um, my balsa. I also cut and glued together some sections of, um, some lengths of the uh, matchstick. So these are the three lengths that I've got to build the palisade for. <clears throat> and what I'm going to be doing, and I'll do this very quickly and then I'll turn the camera off and get it done off camera, is I will be putting it at about two, about two centimetres up, just, over, just under two centimetres up, so that there's about two and a half to three centimetres above the, uh, above the level of the, of the floor. So maybe actually even a little bit lower, maybe about one and a half centimetres, there we are. So I'm going to get some super glue and we're going to glue this support on. And then when that's gone off, I will glue another one at the other end. Actually, I might lift it, see if I can, no, I'll wait for it to go off. And then what I'll do is I will then glue all the rest of the palisade to this and I'll do the same for this one and for this one. So when that's done, then I'll be able to put it onto the base here um, and I will probably build it up a little bit with some air drying clay. This is warping quite badly, as you can see. I'm gonna to have to do something about that. I'm not sure what yet, but um, I'll, put, I'll build up a little bit of air dry clay, put a little bit more of the sand color on and then we'll be pretty much there. I probably will stain it before I stick it in place. So that's probably gonna be the next step. So I'll get all of these glued and then we'll look at staining and, um, and we'll move on from there. 
So really good news. I've started painting on my miniatures, as you can see, and I've decided to just make sure that my scales were correct, which you may think is a little bit late, but I was quite confident on my measuring. So what will happen is that will sit there on top of that ledge. So if I turn that round and attempt to hold that in place and then pop Mr. Miniature on there, you can see that the height is pretty much perfect. I'm actually just a little bit out of, out of focus there, so let me just do that. Um, yeah, so the height is pretty much perfect for that guy. He's behind some of the lower ones and it's, um, and yeah, yeah, he's going to look good. So what I need to do now is cut out for the cannon, which is going to go, one of which is going to go here, and one of which is going to go here. So I'll have to do that on the, um, on the palisade. Um, and then I will be able to glue that in place and secure it and then start staining it. So yeah, good progress. Now then, these are, have been painted with PVA since the last time I filmed. I just did it very quickly, put a full coat of PVA all over the back just to give it a little bit more stability. Uh, what I'm now going to do is I'm now going to stick them down and stick them actually to the framework. And I'm going to use hot glue for this, which is not a tool I normally use, but I think it's going to work well in this case. So all I'm going to be doing is pushing a bead of hot glue across the top where I want it to sit and then press the um, press that down onto it basically like that okay and then anything that's um, that goes over the edge can obviously that can obviously be cleaned up but that's also going to be a really quick way of doing it as you can see it doesn't take long so run a bead of PV of the uh, hot glue along like that this is the cold hot glue that I bought on Luke's recommendation and then press it down in and the observant among you have noticed that I've not yet done the holes for the um, guns and that's because I want to do it after I get this in because I might put another reinforcing bar across above here and then I might cut out between this bar and that bar just so that it's actually stay a bit more stable. So now we press that down in like that. And that is done. There we are. We have a palisade. Look at that. Very, very pleased. Right, so I'm going to let that go off, do a few other bits and pieces of different hobby activity, and I'll come back to it potentially and I will um, do the staining and show you the next steps. I have a couple of quick tests to do on this, which I'm gonna get done now while I've just got a minute or two away from the desk. The first one is gonna to be to trim down the these here so that I've got a little shooting gallery or shooting position for my cannon. Now I could have done this earlier and I hope I don't regret that I didn't do it earlier. But that's where I'm going to take out. So I'm going to take out these two and these two. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do it yet. So I'm going to have a quick bit of a think. And then I will tell you what I did when I've done it. Oh, and I may bring you along for the second one. So there we are. That worked out okay. That was quite easy in the end. So what I did was I got a, a very sharp. This is a um, Cetadel hobby knife. And very, very carefully worked it along until I'd removed one of them. And then the other one was easier to do. So I'll try to get the camera on it, I'll probably um, focus in and try to do it on camera. Uh, so hopefully you'll be able to see this process in a second. As you can see, what I've done is I have set this down so that it is flat on the cutting surface. The first thing that I'm going to do is separate at that end there. So run my knife in there. And then once I've got that separated, that's just taking the PVA out of the way so that it will move. I then basically was pushing my knife in like this, just to kind of carve away at it like that. Not very easy. Possibly would have been easier to have worked this out before I glued things together. But I don't always do things in the easiest way. Here's proof. So once we've separated that, which you can see isn't so hard, it's then a little bit easier to work on the next one. So we'll separate this here. And then we just need to come along with the knife and kind of 
push it through and then it should let me just cover it from this side a little bit very very gentle don't want to damage it there we are so just very very carefully and there it is so now we have the other opening and the cannon sits in it it's a little bit actually needs to be taken down a little bit further maybe no, actually it should be okay should be okay cool so that's that done um i've uh, i've got my uh, i've got my cannon box spots so the next thing is going to do is i'm going to stain it so i'll bring you along for that in a second painting and staining is going to be done in two stages so um, this first stage might seem a little bit pointless because what i'm actually doing is staining it with pine and it is pine well it's not pine it's uh, just soft wood but it will add a little bit of heart of texture to, to the color and it will also just act as a sealant to keep it a little bit less likely of getting damaged so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put that over the entirety of the model it will take maybe two or three coats to do this um, and um, once i've done that then what i'll be doing is i'll be putting on a darker color onto the stakes where the bark would probably still be so we'll stain this we'll stain underneath this isn't necessarily as i say just for color it's also for preserving and making sure that the model lasts so uh, yeah i'll get that done and i'll bring you along when i come to the next step which as i say is going to be applying the bark color to the stakes shouldn't take me too long Next task to do here is to paint the darker bark colour where the pegs haven't been, or the stakes haven't been sharpened down. So I've got my um, raw rumber, as I like to use, and I'm gonna just come in and I'm gonna basically dry brushy, not really dry brush, but uh, spread it around quite a lot. So I'm not gonna have very much paint on my brush. And we're just gonna come in like this, and we're just gonna paint down taking a lot off as we go just to give the impression of bark like this so you can see what I'm trying to do is not overload it and I am taking it off a lot where I've oops, caught it then where I've got a little bit already on I'm coming back and taking it off and my brush is slightly less loaded so that it still re re retains that little bit of a uh, of a golden tint which is what I'm looking at achieving on this so I'll get that done now uh, on this front and back um, and then I'll bring you along when it's done um, just I'll, I'll turn the camera back on when it's finished because it's uh, not focusing very well for some reason and uh, hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing here so yeah it's a simple technique doesn't take very long it'll take me a couple of minutes so I'll bring you back when it's finished and you can see what it looks like well, there you are, that was just another couple of minutes and it's done. I've done both inside and out, so I'm gonna let that to dry. Um, and next up, we're gonna focus on the actual board, which you can see is still warped, which is still really frustrating, but that's life. I, uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about it, so I'm just gonna ignore it for now. Well, we're waiting for that palisade to dry before I start to actually set it in place, which is the next thing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna look at some foliage. So I don't actually have any uh, real uh, or any modeled um, coconut trees because I haven't finished working on those I was planning a video of those weeks ago and it just has gone by the wayside with how busy I've been so what I'm going to be doing on this is I'm going to make use of these um, fake plants which I picked up just at the uh, hardware store and I think they're going to work fine so what I'm going to be doing first of all is sticking a bunch of these maybe um, four or five of these type of just the two stuck together as you can see with hot glue onto here and then I'll come along and I will um, add a little bit more uh, ground cover just to um, cover up the base um, and I might even do a little bit of painting on them as well. So I've got my, my hot glue gun, my cold hot glue gun here which has some strange kind of thing going on and so what we're going to do is just put a blob of hot glue on. I really don't get on with hot glue, it annoys me and then stick that in place there. That's gonna be the base one. Oops, I should have taken that out. There we are. So stick the base down in like that. And then when that's gone off, what we'll do is we'll come along with the hot glue gun again. I mean, there are benefits to hot glue, which is how quick it is to use. Put a blob in the middle. 
and then put our second one in. That will work fine. So there we are, like that. And what I'll do, as I've said, is once I've done all of these, I will come and build up around the base with some other ground cover. So I'll get the rest of these stuck in, and then I'll bring you along for the next step shortly. I say I don't like hot glue guns, and then I use them all the time, but uh, <laughs> they, they are relatively easy to use. So what I'm about to do now, if I haven't put these, I have, I've put these in the wrong place, these clamps. So I have to shift the clamps a little bit. Um, Maybe just that one at the back there. Let me just get that done. I've clamped this to one to a couple of board, particle boards just so that I can try to uh, resolve the warp. Um, just for now, I'm not sure what I'm going to do long term, but for now it's going to sit on that. Frankly, um, I may I may end up mounting it to it. I'm not sure. Be a bit a bit stupid, but this is only a display piece. This will never be game done. Um, so it might be quite nice to mount it on this. But anyway, that's beside the point and not what I'm here for. So what I'm about to do now is hot glue the um, palisade into place. Uh, and then once that's done, I'm gonna come along and I'll do this right now before I go to bed, even though it's late, I wanna get it done. And I'm gonna just build up the front with some air dry clay, which I will leave to go off overnight and then I will be ready to paint tomorrow. And at the same time, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be coming in here with the air dry clay to build up some trunks at the bottom of these well they're kind of palm trees aren't they they're close enough so we will run a bead of hot glue just along the bottom of these stakes like this and with that done we will very very carefully put it in place because I don't really want to be having hot glue going everywhere all over my nice terrain. So, oh, uh, knocked my light. I was careless. Let's hook it out of, out of the way for now. There we are. So I think that is going to be fine if I just push that down. This is why I need to do the clay because my base is not totally flat and so there's gaps and what have you but the the air the, the hot glue is more being put in place to hold it while I put the clay in and the clay is what will actually end up being what holds it and makes it really secure but that that there will be fine as I say what I'll do now is I'll come along with some clay um, I'll bring you along for that and show you how I'm going to do it um, but that's going to be held in place well enough, I think. I don't need to panic too much. Yeah, that's good enough. Holding it down. And um, I'll just go and get the air dry clay and I'll bring it back in a second. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to come along at the base of these plants first of all. And this is going to be a two-stage or three-stage process, really. I'm going to put some PVA around the base because, as I keep on saying, clay is not sticky so while it might stay there and it might look like it's going to work long term it won't it will come away that's just how it is and i'll do one of these on camera and get the rest done and then i'll bring it back for the next step which will be the base around these around the palisade so what i've got is some air dry clay which i'm going to smudge out into a kind of a, a flat what's it and then i'm going to push that in around the base here and the idea is is it will both support the greenery but also look a little bit like a tree so you want to kind of push it up a bit they're not going to be perfect they're not going to be what they look like but they're going to be close enough for me and then remembering that the most important thing to have to hand when you're working with air dry clay is a little thing of water which I've got at the back there. I also have a little sculpting tool and what I would do is I'll come in and I will just kind of like sculpt some striations, some stripes into it to make it look a little bit more natural and less smoothed. So I'm going to do that on all of these trees and um, I'll bring you back when I come to the next step. Won't take me very long, as you can see. That only took a couple of minutes. So yeah, I'll get that done, 
and I'll bring it back in a minute. Uh, that did not take me very long. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along and again do basically the same technique. So I'm going to be putting some PVA glue just so there's something to bind the air dry clay to as we come along. And this may be a little bit fiddly in places but it'll be fine. So we're just going to do that along there. Take my air dry clay that I've got. Let me just get that a little bit of a better angle for you. There we are. And we'll come in, roll a sausage, slap it in, and then smooth it down. And I will make this look like it has been built up. So it is not supposed to look like a natural bank because it has been built up when they've made the uh, when they made this palisade, they have built up the rampart in front. So I will again, same again, go away and do this. And I'll bring it back when it's finished to show what it looks like. Which will not, again, will not take me very long. Just to make sure that I don't break anything while doing this. Which isn't a given with my track record. This is moving around a bit more than I wanted it to as well. Might have been a better idea to have had this bank in and pressed the uh, palisade into it. That might end up, you know, look better. But hey, we are where we are, so I'm going to carry on with this and I'll bring you back when I have finished this process. And there we are, I'll let that to go off overnight now. So you can see that I've put some in underneath as well, just at each end, just here and up here as well so that it's got a little bit of support on both sides. Couldn't get all the way in as much as I wanted to because my fat fingers, but I am pretty happy with how that's looking in terms of a banked, banked up in front of the palisade. And uh, ultimately this is coming in and coming along quite nicely. It's not that far off. I do still need to paint all the miniatures, uh, but that isn't something I'm too stressed about uh, because um, I want to do them anyway. Probably the only thing I need, I need to think about doing is what I'm going to do at the back here, whether I'm going to have some uh, pile of cannonball piles and things like that. So uh, I'll think about that over the next day or two. Uh, but I'm going to let that to dry now and uh, it's very, very close to completed. This has now gone off, the air dry clay. It's actually gone off for a couple of days, but I've been busy with other things. So what I'm going to come in now and do is add in the same stuff. So this is the mix of uh, PVA and um, sand from the back bank and grout and I'm just going to come in and I'm going to paint it over the top. Uh, it may take two applications because I really want to get rid of all the white. But yeah, so I'll just come along and do this. Uh, and when that's done, we won't be far off finished on this part of the build. Um, I am making good progress. Oh, I say good progress. I'm making some progress on the soldiers. So on the two soldiers that are going to populate this little display to make it more a little bit more interesting because this will just end up being a, a display piece I think. So it'll be a board on which some figures can sit. I don't think it's ever going to be playable um, because I'd have to extend it and that's a whole lot more hassle than it's worth. I'll make a, a brand new one. Uh, but I am making progress on those. Uh, so, um, so very soon the whole thing will be together. Um, but this this is nearly done now. Um, I do also want to do the um, put some more interesting things behind the palisade, so um, make a tent or something. So I'll I'll do that as well. And bring you along for that. But I'm just rambling now. I'm just going to cover all of this with the same. Uh, so I will again put some clean film over the top of my pot and save that and come back and see if I need to do another second coat later, but I'll leave that to dry now. Angela very, very kindly went out and got me these ball bearings. Um, they're actually BBs, I believe, the smallest ones. Because what I would like to do on this diorama now is put a little pile of cannonballs. So what I'm going to do is get a little bit of PVA glue and put it down on this little square of paper cardboard even and start to drop these cannonballs into the PVA and what I'll do is I'm going to make a little pile like this yeah, let's do five I should just yeah okay and then we'll drop another little blob of PVA on top and we'll drop another couple on 
And what we'll do is, when that's dry, I will come in and paint it. And I will also cut out around it so that it's not very... Um, so that it's only a very, very, like, small base around the edge. And then I'll paint it black. And that then will be just a little pile of cannonballs. If it stays, I maybe should wait for it to dry before I try and pile more on. There we are. That'll be a little pile of cannonballs, which will look really nice. Now, I've also got some more BBs coming, which, uh, sorry, not BBs, more, more um, ball bearings coming. And when they come, I'll make a few more stacks just like that. But that's how I'm doing it. Very, very, very simple. The cannonballs have now dried. So what I'm going to do very, very carefully is come in with my sharp Stanley knife and trim off most of the base because we don't need all that base. And then once that's done, then I'm gonna get some very watered down black paint and I'm just gonna, I might actually even dip it. I'm just gonna like drop it in or drop it over the top and that will both color the brown so it's not so obvious and also take away some of the shine that's on the BBs. But I think these look great. They were maybe a little bit big, scale big, but this is for a war game and for a display piece, not for an actual scale diorama. So they'll be fine. Um, it might be that I get some more, um, a different size. If I do, then that's great. I'll do the same thing. But yes, yeah, so now the, uh, the task is just a little bit of very, very watered down black paint and uh, that will be done. So I'll just go and grab that and then I'll show you how that looks. I've just got a little bit of time at the painting desk, which has been really nice, but I'm knackered now, so I'm stopping. I've managed to get the uh, skin tone done on these Indian Braves. I'm using brown sand from Vallejo to paint these, which is a really good go-to for more tanned or darker skinned, but where you don't want to go completely towards the dark end. That's really, really cool for these kind of, um, these kind of miniatures. It's working really well. I was planning on getting them completely finished tonight, but yeah, I'm just too tired. I'm gonna do a bad job, so I'm gonna stop. So there we are. Uh, it's nice to get a little bit of progress. I need these to be finished so that I can include them in my diorama. So there you are. These are done by the washes, which I will do tomorrow. And again, I'm really, really pleased with how these are looking. I've painted the bases as well, not the rims yet. Um, but yeah, I'm very, very pleased with how these have come out. Again, same as with the other ones I painted for Blood and Plunder, I followed the uh, picture very closely and I'm really pleased that I did that because they do look great. So these are the Young Braves um, and with the other miniatures, I now have enough for my diorama. So that's brilliant because I want to finish that tomorrow. Um, and this is the last thing I had to do was just get the miniatures ready. So tomorrow morning, I'll wash these. Um, and maybe paint the rims and then I will get them onto the diorama and take some pictures. So very, very pleased about that. So there we are, a really enjoyable painting session. Bakir, my absolute legend of a builder, managed to source me some three millimetre uh, ball bearings, which are gonna be perfect size for what we're trying to do here. So what I'm gonna do is exactly the same technique as I did before, which is a blob of PVA, and drop some ball bearings on it. I'm gonna be a little bit more patient because they're so small and I really, really don't wanna lose them. And I might actually even put them into a little pot rather than a bag. But I'm gonna make a couple of uh, stacks of the ball bearings and then paint them the same. So we'll get that done and I'll show you what they look like when they're finished. I was just getting ready to take some pictures of this as it's the final day. And I uh, noticed that I've not painted the, these trunks. So what I'm gonna do is use this, this is a terrain glue that I've made up with a nice ready brown, which is what I wanted for these. I totally forgot about it, frankly. And I'm gonna paint all of these brown, all of these trunks with this ready brown paint. Uh, I'm all but ready on everything else. Um, I was just starting to kind of dress the scene. Um, and I noticed, oops, I forgot. So thank goodness I noticed. So I'll get this done. And that's gonna be the final actual painting task and then uh, next time you see it will probably be be done and be dressed and I'll be taking photographs as well to show to Sigurd and put onto Instagram. So the absolute last thing that I'm going to do for this build is I'm going to make a tent. Uh, now I've done this before, I did this on the uh, on a build for one of the Battle Games Middle Earth videos, the one where you're making the campsite 
funnily enough. And I'm going to use the same technique, except I'm going to do it slightly quicker. I'm going to make use of a hot glue gun, which I don't normally really like doing. But in this case, I'm going to do it just because I want to see how well it works. So what you do is you cut out your base square, however large you want it to be. Okay, like so. So you've got a square of cardboard there. And then what you're going to do is you're going to cut out another of the same length, but slightly less depth, slightly not as tall, like so. And that is going to act as the upright. So what we then do is we get our hot glue gun, which I have been heating up in preparation, and run a bead down the centre. And then you can set your upright in that bead and it will dry really quickly. Now this, to me, is what all the hot glue guns are good for. <laughs> so that there will now go off and what I'll do is I will just quickly tidy the cardboard away and bring you back for the next step. What you can see here is my old combats which I saved because they are perfect for this sort of task. So what I'm going to do is I can offer that up and you can see that the length is about right, it's perfect. I'm going to cut in a straight line from here all the way to the seam because I am actually making two um, as you can see. So I've just got some good sharp scissors and what I'll do is I'll cut along that line. So let's get that done. There we are, we have a not very straight section, <laughs> but that should be fine. You can see it's gonna be a bit wide there. So what we can probably do actually is just trim that down along that line there, just to make sure that it's about square. And then it's another simple process where we will get a bead of hot glue down the end. Like so. And then press our cloth into it. Try not to stick our fingers, which is why I don't like hot glue. It dries fast, but it's also messy. There we are, so we've got that done. And so then we can then put another bead of hot glue on this side, and then we can trim down the excess, and we have ourselves a tent. And all you have to do then is decide if you want to paint inside or not, or whether you want to do anything extra additional. I'm not gonna bother for this purposes. This is gonna be perfectly fine. There we are, we have a tent, and we can now trim the excess off, like so. And a little bit of paint inside, and it'll be fine. It's a bit wonky in places, but that's fine. It's supposed to be an army tent. It's not supposed to look like it's a been put up like by a Boy Scout. <laughs> there we are. We have one tent which can go onto the diorama. So I will now cut and glue the next one and then they can go on and then we really are done. Well there you are, what an enjoyable build that was and what a great result. I was really pleased with it and what Sigurd, Welton Bar Club, did was also stunning. So what I'm about to do is pop some music on and show some pictures of my build and then of his build and I hope that you will join me in congratulating him on such a fantastic result it really was good another thing i want to say is thank him so much for the fun month that we had building together we had some good banter we exchanged some fun messages and we just kind of drove each other forwards i think i probably wouldn't have put the time into this and i probably wouldn't even have done it at all even though it is something i wanted to do anyway without that challenge and that uh, um, encouragement and that community so thank you very much that was really appreciated, Sigurd. And I look forward to seeing what you do in January when I think you're going to look for someone else. So if you are looking to take part in this, go and find him on Instagram and uh, put yourself forward to do a month build, just a friendly challenge. Um, and I'm sure that he'll be happy to hear from you. But if, if lots of you do it, then maybe I'll have to pick between you. But anyway, thanks very much, Sigurd. I'll wrap up now. I'll pop some music on. We will see the pictures, but I will close off this part of the video by saying, as always, thank you very much for watching and please stay healthy, stay safe and stay well.